Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be talking about how do we know whether to add or multiply combinations like the previous problem, okay? And so the big phrase I want you to remember, and I really would just tell you to memorize one of these and know that the know that they complement each other, okay? And the one I like is or means add, okay? If you can remember or means add, or means add, or means add. If we see the phrase or show up in our problem, that means we're going to be adding together combinations when things get more difficult. If we see that and, the word and, we have to have two different things happening. What are the, pro what are the how many times can this happen and this happen? That means we're gonna multiply the values together. So in other words, in the previous problem, the reason I multiplied is because in order to meet this requirement of having five card hands that are all five cards of the same color, I had to have red or black, I had to have one color, and I needed to choose five of those out of the 26 remaining cards. So I had to meet both of these requirements at the same time. That's why I multiplied. So let's look at a different example here, and hope, hopefully this will help shore up our ideas a little bit. William Shakespeare wrote 38 plays, and they can divide, be divided into three genres. So out of those 38 plays, 18 of them are considered comedies, 10 are considered histories, 10 are considered tragedies. So how many different sets of exactly two comedies and one tragedy can you read? There's the key word, and. Because I see the word and, I have two requirements that have to be met. I need to, re meet, I need to read two comedies and I need to read exactly one tragedy. And so what I do is I come up here and I say, well, what are the, uh, how many ways can I read two comedies, right? So out of these, I notice that there are 18 comedies to choose from, right? 18 are comedies. So I have 18 things that are comedies. It doesn't matter which one I read first and which one I read second. I just need to read two of them. So order doesn't matter. There's a combination problem. I'm going to choose of those 18 comedies. I'm going to choose two at a time. But then I also have to meet the requirement of reading one tragedy. Okay, so I have 10 tragedies to choose from. It doesn't matter which one I read first, and since I'm only reading one, that's almost nonsensical, isn't it? I'm going to choose one at a time. I'm going to take these values because I need to meet both requirements at the same time. I'm going to multiply together. And so on my calculator, I'm going to do 18 math menu in CR2. That's 153 different ways times and then 10 in CR1. And that's 10. I have 10 choices there. I think that's probably no surprise. And so my answer then is 153 times 10, which is 1,530 different sets of, of reading that involve two comedies and one tragedy out of Shakespeare's 38 plays. Okay, now, second question. How many different sets of at most three plays can you read? And this is a little bit more difficult. See, when it says the word at most, we gotta be careful. Because that means that I can go through, and I don't care what the genre is, but it says I can go through and I can read zero of his plays, I can read one, I can read two, or I can read three of his plays, right? Out of the 38. And so how many different sets of these can I read? Maybe it's Hamlet and it's Romeo and Juliet and it's, you know, and those are the two. Maybe that's it. Hamlet and Romeo and Juliet, so I would fit into this category, okay? And that would be different than... Um, Boy, I should know my, and Midsummer's Night Dream, right, would be the third, okay? I should read up on my Shakespeare a little bit. But maybe I only read uh, one of them. You know, I, I don't really care what order I read them, just that I read either zero or one or two or three of his things. So these are all combination problems. And so what I would have to do here is because I'm saying this, now let me say it again, ready? I could read zero or one or two or three of his plays, right? See the keyword show up? I know it's not specifically written out, but it's an or problem. That means what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find how many time, ways I can read zero. I'm gonna add it because it's or. Or means add. I'm gonna add it to the possibility of meaning one, and then two, and then three. So it's gonna look something like this. 38 plays to choose from. I'm gonna choose zero at a time. I'm gonna add in the number of ways that I can read one play. I'm going to add in the number of ways that I can read two plays. I'm going to add the number of ways that I can read three plays. I'm going to add these values together. 38. 
chosen, zero at a time. This is one. I'm going to repeat it for one. This is 38. I'm going to repeat it. Oh, by the way, you want to know how I enter that so quickly? Okay. All I have to do is I hit second and I hit enter and it says bring up the last thing that I entered in the calculator and now I can just go back and change that zero that one to a two right 38 NCR 2 is 703 and then I do second and I hit enter and it brings up the last command line I change that to a three it's 8436 so when I add all of these values together 8436 plus 703 plus 38 plus 1 it turns out that there are 9,178 different sets that involve anywhere from 0 to 3 of his plays. So hopefully that makes a little more sense. You are really going to get comfortable with this idea of or means add. Or means add. I'm going to say it again. Or means add. You're going to get really comfortable with it over the next few weeks or so because we're going to do a lot of problems that involve either multiplying or adding together different probabilities.